Alabama, welcome to Bryant-Denny Stadium, home of the Crimson Tide. This place is charged up and ready for a big game today. This is an important matchup, a battle of two top 10 teams, two forces colliding. One team will leave here making a big statement, as we'll see the number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, taking on the sixth ranked team in the land, the Alabama Crimson Tide. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Chris Fowler, joined here in the booth by Kirk Herbstreit. Kirk, let's get to the action on the field. will kick this away to get us going. Fields it just outside the goal line. They can't stop him. To be tackled at the 17. Strong job by the coverage team. So Alabama's offense will get the first swing today. And here comes the tight end who's having such a great season. Kirk, you talk to opponents and they always use the same phrase, matchup nightmare, this guy. Well, what stands out to me with this guy is it's not very often you're right. The defensive coordinators are most concerned about a tight end. But in this case, that is exactly what we're dealing with. This guy can hurt you in so many different ways. I'll take that every single time. Offensive line does a nice job up front. This back's vision and ability to get positive yards by lowering his pads on full display right there. Offense getting set. It's second down. Out of the shotgun, he hands it off. Tackle right at the 30, good enough to move the sticks. Chris, I don't know, there's just something about that Bama uniform. When they run the football, it just feels right. It's a combination of having those big offensive linemen, a really physical approach at the line of scrimmage, and backs that are able to pick up first downs like that right there. Beautiful play. And they'll run it out of the shotgun. See, that's how you limit what an offense wants to do. This time, the defense just won the battle up front at the line of scrimmage, not giving up any big plays. Everybody's gap sound. It's really solid defense on that play. Offense getting set. Second down play here. It's a run. Running back's got it. They try the middle, but gain nothing on that play. Boy, this defense is stepping up here early in this game, really controlling the line of scrimmage. Just nowhere to go on this last play. And now we've got a third down, a big opportunity for this defense to get off the field. They're backed up here, trying to make something happen on third and long. To throw, it's Milrow. The pass rush closing in. Oh, a sack. The senior on this defense making a big play. Well, this is exactly how you can slow down the momentum and the rhythm of an offense. you got to get some tackles for a loss and some sacks. This time, they come up with a sack by getting after that quarterback. And the punt team now on to kick it away. With the return, it's Evans. He's brought down, but a good effort to make something of that return. So Georgia's offense comes out for their first possession today. All right, Kirk, let's take a quick look at the impact players for today's game and how they're going to affect the outcome. These are your leaders on the field and in the locker room. These are your go-to guys, not only when you need a play to be made, but also when you need somebody to rally your team. Chris, textbook job by the defense surrounding the runner and preventing that play from being bounced to the outside. Listen to the crowd energy here in the early going. This is a tough, tough environment for visitors. Grab behind the line, it's Love It. And the defense swarms not much of a gain on that completion. Well, any time an offensive coordinator calls a wide receiver screen, he's trying to get offensive linemen out in front of the receiver to create a wall so that receiver can pick a lane to run through. How about the defense here, though? That's called team pursuit and swarming to the football. They didn't give him any lanes, so not much yards downfield for the receiver. Grab near the sticks. It's ETN. Tackle is made very near midfield. Good enough for a first down. Chris, I kind of feel like a coach right now because I'm always wondering why the angle route continues to be so effective when as an inside linebacker, 
all you're ever taught. All you hear about is don't let them cross your face. If they want to go to the outside, it's okay. But inside, no, no, no. Can't have that happen in a cost them. Again, makes it second and medium. Keep it on the ground. There's the handoff. They bring him down, but that game moves the ball all the way to the 31. Chris, a really good job here by this back to be able to find that hole and pick up the yards for this first down. And boy, George has had some good backs over the years, and this young man is living up to that tradition today. This Georgia offense is moving quickly down the field. Quick throw. That's an RPO caught on the left side. And they get him down after the completion. Well, defense didn't have any time at all to get pressure on the quarterback. He gets the ball out of his hands pretty quickly on the hitch to the receiver. Second down after that run on the previous play. Scanning the field. It's back. Finds that big tight end for a short pass. And he picks up the first down before they get him to the ground. Well, this is what coaches love to see. A quarterback with the ability to read the defense properly and then just get it to the open man. Sometimes it sounds simple, but it's tough to execute. This time we have good recognition by the quarterback. Then he gets it down to the tight end. You can see what he can do after the catch. Takes the ball and heads to the left. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Well, there's that excellent linebacker with a clear path just running downhill quickly. You know, I think one of the great things about watching this guy play all year is his vision. He just has great instincts. That time, the defensive line ate up all the linemen, freed up the linebacker to get into the backfield, and the result is a tackle for a loss for the backer. Quarterback looking to throw it on second down. That one falls incomplete, looking for a flag, doesn't get it, brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out the punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, he's unable to hold on to the football. Just underway, and this home crowd is fired up and ready to make a difference today. Looking for six, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bulldogs. That kind of play is almost impossible to defend when the quarterback is throwing the ball with that kind of accuracy and timing and the receiver runs a route like this, good luck trying to stop it. So maybe this is a great start for this combination of this quarterback and receiver for a big day. Now the try here for the extra point. BAT is good. They jump in front, 7-0. Kickoff team on the field getting set now. Return starts from inside the five. And the returner brought down by the coverage team there. So here comes the Alabama offense back out of the field. The last drive stalled. They were forced to punt it away. Let's see what they can come up with this time. To the air. It's Milrow. Looks toward the sideline. Finds the running back. Gets past the tackler into open space now. Heads out of bounds after a solid game. More than enough to pick up the first down. You know, plays like this are what Alabama offense is all about. They run the football, and then they're efficient within their passing game. Think about it. They won a couple national championships with Greg McElroy and A.J. McCarron by just being efficient and playing smart at the position and being a great complement to that running game in the defense. That's complete downfield. And it's a huge chunk play. The tackle was finally made, but the ball moved to the 47-yard line. A nice throw and a great catch by another Alabama wide receivers. That's really where we are anymore with Alabama. You just come to expect great receivers like this. You think back in recent years to Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith. The list goes on and on. 
Boy, they've got some great-looking receivers on this squad. On the ground, it's Haynes. That's a nice tackle there by the senior. Well, another short game for this offense on the ground, and I've got to give a lot of credit to the defense. They have really negated that aspect of this offense the entire first half and really making them one-dimensional. And if that doesn't change, I don't know how they get back into this game. Second down after that run on the previous play. The shotgun handoff here. And they tackle him, but not before he picks up the first. Look, I realize on any play call, when it's properly executed, it can go to the house for a touchdown. But the runs that really make a game plan work are the ones where you get just what you need. And he barely got the first down, but he got it. Alabama getting set with a first and 10 coming up. Quarterback pulls the ball. It's a keeper powering through. And the tackle is made after a four-yard game, so second and six. Well, there's just so many things happening on these read option plays, and they happen fast. This defense has done a good job of trying to prevent this quarterback from hitting the big play. He gets some yards here, but at least he didn't get out for a big game. Offense comes up to the line. They might have a chance for a couple more plays before the quarter expires. Defense makes the tackle with the clock running. That'll probably be the final play of this first quarter. Well, Kirk, it's Georgia on top so far. Let's check out the stats now through the opening period. They've flipped ends of the field. We're ready now for the second period. They come to the line, a long way to go for the first down, but needing this crucial conversion right now. Let's it go quickly. He's got it for a big game. Tackle, but first down. Well, this is why this guy's one of the top wide receivers in college football. It's third down. The defense knows you're probably going to go to him, and they still can't stop him from coming down with a big play. Alabama now operating in the red zone. Pre-snap motion from the receiver, and they'll try the jet sweep here. Great move there. And he stopped just short down at the two, but an excellent run. Well, this defense has to respect this quarterback and how he can get out in the open. Sometimes he will run, but the offensive coordinator does a nice job with the defense focused on the quarterback. You go with a jet sweep, you get your speedster out on the edge, and the defense doesn't know if the quarterback has it or if he hands it off to the jet sweep. That's a big gain for the offense. They'll try to run it in on first and goal. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Well, it is tough to run the football inside this five-yard line. Give all the credit to that defensive line, eating up those linemen, allowing the rest of the defense to fly to the football for that short loss. Ball back at the six for a second and goal off that loss. Here's the handoff, testing the middle. He's swarmed by the defense. Well, he came close to putting this ball into the end zone. He comes up short. Now we're looking at a third and goal. Boy, the defense is digging in. The offensive line trying to get a good push. I'm curious to see if they try to run the football again here on third and goal. After a long drive, it's a crucial four-point play. Can they score a touchdown or have to settle for all the way to the end zone? Touchdown, Alabama. So they reach the end zone after a marathon march. How about the execution in that drive, Kirk? Well, I know a lot of times people get excited for the big plays. They're fun to watch. But what's impressive to me is an offense that can put together a long drive and then finally cap it off with a touchdown. That way you don't have to always rely on the big plays. That's a great drive. Now the important point after attempt. And there's the point after. Now the kickoff team is out on the field. Bringing it out, it's Bell. Solid coverage there, they get him at the 15. That's where the offense will take over. And the Bulldogs offense is back out on the field. 
great possession last time. They punch it into the end zone. Can the defense come up with a stop this time? Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. Chris, I think we all kind of get caught up in third down. What, what's an offense doing on third down? But I think what's also important is how well you defend first down. If you can hold your opponents to a short gain or a tackle for a loss, you throw the offense out of whack, and their game plan gets much more challenging to try to come up with that first down. Moving past the 25. Solid gain there. Moves the ball out to the 32. Really good route here by the receiver, but I love the quarterback's ability to look off that safety and make that throw, and that's part of the quarterback's job here when you play in Athens for this Georgia offense. They've had some great quarterbacks over the years. Guys like Matthew Stafford and Aaron Murray and more recently Jake Fromm and, of course, Stetson Bennett, who won back-to-back -back national championships, and what they're seeing today from this quarterback, they got to be very proud of. Second down after that run on the previous play. Scanning the field, it's back. It's a screen pass complete to the running back. Defense makes the stop very close to a first down. Boy, they're lucky they completed this pass at all. The quarterback, in fact, gets hit as he throws the ball. Now listen, we know the linemen are going to allow the defense to come in. At that time, they allowed him to get in there a little bit too fast. They're lucky the quarterback was able to see it and get rid of it. And third and short, they try to pick it up on the ground. Looks like Georgia will have the first down. Man, I love the toughness from this offense here on third down and short. Being able to get behind a big physical offensive line, they get a hat on a hat get enough of a push, and the back is able to get behind there and find just enough real estate to pick up the first down. The Bulldogs pick up enough yardage to get a fresh set of downs. The sophomore with a strong tackle there. You know, in the era that we live in right now, everybody wants to spread the field around, try to create space, try to create one-on-one -on -one matchups, and the defense is countered over the years by trying to play out wide. But here's a great example of the defense. Has the ability to play wide, but still be solid at the line of scrimmage, not give up big run plays. An inside give now from the shotgun. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. My gosh, this offensive line's got to do a better job of blocking. The defense was zero in on the ball carrier and absolutely nowhere to go for the offense. What will the call be on third and long now from the 44? Dropping back, we're going to throw for the first down. Looks downfield and finds a receiver who worked his way wide open. And a big game before he goes out of bounds. The offense keeps churning, gets a fresh set of downs. And you just continue to see the chemistry between these two. And they told us yesterday in our production meeting, they spent hours and hours of working and developing that chemistry and that rhythm by throwing together throughout those summer months. And man, it's starting to really pay off. He's become his security blanket for the quarterback. And especially on third down, get him the ball. And they make the stop to get the ball carrier down. No game there. This defense has been getting sliced up on the drive, but they push back that time, Kirk. Yeah, kind of a bend-but-don't-break mentality by this defense. They have been giving up some big chunks here on this drive, but let's see if a stop like this can give them a little bit of confidence here. Now try to pressure the quarterback on these upcoming plays. Short connection to the tight end here. A huge hit by the linebacker. A collision of big bodies there. Boy, that's pretty good coverage here by this defense. Not much of a window to throw this ball into. But the quarterback's accuracy and the size of the tight end picks up a nice game. The clock has stopped. We've reached the two-minute warning before halftime. Offense looking to keep the drive alive. It's third down. Looking to pass. It's Beck. This one's going to fall incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Hey, the good news is here, Chris, they're still in field goal range, and they didn't cost themselves any points. But they could have more. They've got to be thinking about going for this on fourth and short. 
Looks like the coach decides to go for three points here. Here comes the field goal team. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Right down the middle. Snap, the hold, the kick, everything there perfect to put three points up here for the offense. Following the field goal, the kickoff team is out there now. And here's the return from inside the five. To be tackled at the 17. Strong job by the coverage team. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. If they want to cut into this lead before halftime, they have to work quickly now. Cut quickly. But a huge hit by the linebacker. What a tackle. That's a good job here, staying ahead of the chains. Good pickup here on first down. The quarterback hits the safety valve that time. The big tight end. That'll bring up a second manageable here for this offense. They'll crank up the tempo here on second down. The time is running out. Quarterback drops back, probing the secondary. Caught near the sticks. It's long. And the timeout is called important stage late here in the second quarter. You know, we talked this week with the offensive coordinator about what makes this receiver so special. He kept referring to his route running. Here's an example of that. Great route, enough separation to give the quarterback a nice lane to throw the football. So after the incompletion, it's second down. Back to pass. It's Milrow. Tipped and then dropped. A chance to make a play, but instead it's third down. Some players just have a real knack for timing their jump, and that defender was able to get a big paw on the ball and bat it away. Not going to be easy here. Backed up a long way to go for a first down. Drops back, needing a third down completion here. There's a wide open receiver complete. An explosive play, big game. Spotted down near the 37. Boy, this quarterback throws a beautiful ball. Another big game for this offense and a chance to get points on the board before we get to halftime. Alabama getting set for the first and 10 now. And the quarterback drops back, looking for an open man. Cannot escape that ferocious pass rush. It's a sack. Offense stops the clock with their second timeout to talk strategy. After the sack on first down, it's second down. Here's the snap. Quarterback looking to throw. That's caught. It's law. And they bring him down. That's a very solid game, but still well short of the mark the timing here between the quarterback and his receiver pick up some positive yards and I continue to be impressed with just the, the chemistry between these two seventh play of the drive coming up but it is third down and long dropping back we're going to throw for the first down doesn't hold on good hit by the DB now it brings up fourth down Hey, it's an incompletion, but it's a nice job by the quarterback. I know it didn't pan out, but the most important thing is he didn't turn the football over and he didn't take a sack. It'll give your kicker a chance to put some points on the board if they opt for the field goal here on fourth down. So the decision is to not go for it, but settle for three. Here comes the field goal team. And he's got it from 55 yards away and never in doubt. Boy, this guy had plenty of leg here, too. Chris, you remember the days when a kick from 50-plus was a major accomplishment? Now these guys knock these out like they're almost automatic. So they settled for three here, and now the kickoff. See if the opposing offense can answer before halftime. He's going to return it from near the goal line. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. 
So they start the drive looking for some late fireworks here, less than 30 seconds before halftime. And off here from the shotgun. Tackle right at the 30, good enough to move the sticks. And a quick timeout call by the offense after the play. So the offense takes the field in the final seconds of the half. Chance for just a couple more plays. On first and ten, looking to throw. Running back has it on a screen now. So a timeout is called to talk strategy. Maybe time for one or two more plays before halftime. That completion makes it second and medium. Dropping back. It's back. Defense is coming after him. And he just throws the ball away there. Nobody open. Excellent coverage. Boy, the quarterback did it about everything he could here to wait for that play to develop. And there was just nobody open. It's great coverage downfield. And instead of taking a sack or potentially throwing the pick, he just gets rid of it. Looks like the final play of the half coming up. Quarterback drops back. The tight end has got it. Full carrier heads out of bounds, but the pickup is good enough to move the chains. First down. And that will do it for the first half here. Kevin Connors now has our halftime update. Gentlemen, what else is new? A spirited environment there in Tuscaloosa. And a really competitive game so far. I'm talking razor-thin margins in the big statistical categories. And while it may be a broken record, turnovers are the name of the game the team that limits them the ones that win that turnover margin generally speaking are the ones that have the best chance to get that dub that said let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to start the second half Alabama will kick it off to start the second half Fields it inside the five-yard line. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. And the Georgia offense is back out on the field. First down, looking to throw the ball. Grab down the middle. It's ETN. We get him down, but that's a nice play. Moves the ball to the 33. Just a really good ball here to be able to pick up this first down for the Georgia offense. And, you know, being able to have a balanced attack, so important in modern college football, and Georgia does that as well as anybody. This line getting set up. It's a first down play. It's a quick grab. They tackle him. Looks like it's going to be just short of the marker, inches away. This defense has got to be aware of these quick throws to these wide receivers. They're lucky he didn't come up with more yards. Second down after that run on the previous play. Looking for a gap. It's ETN. Great cut. They whiff on him. It's a big game before he goes out of bounds. It'll move the sticks more than enough for a first down. Outstanding blocking on the left side of that offensive line. That's really what opened up this play. They did their job, and you can see the results. You burst open and get a big gain on the ground. If I were them, I'd keep going to that side and see how much more success they can have. Dropping back. It's back. Looks to the left for a quick throw. He pulls it in for a big game. Touchdown, Georgia. And they go in front here in the second half. Oh, what a play. Man, this defense, they better watch out for this tight end today. It's proven right there how easily he can slip behind and get lost in coverage. And if that happens, this quarterback's going to find him and make you pay. So they'll try to add to the lead now with the PAT. And after the extra point, it's a 17-10 lead. Kickoff team has come on the field now to send this one away. 
And he takes this from inside the five. He'll be tackled at the 18. That's good coverage there. Alabama's offense coming back onto the field. They got points on the board last time thanks to a long range field goal. Picks up two, so it's second and eight. Chris, you know, the spread error over the years has always grown offensively, but what I've been always impressed with the defenses that really build their defense to play in space still have an ability to be sound at the line of scrimmage and defend a running game. It's exactly what we saw right there. Quarterback wants to throw it on second down, and he's brought down. Offense going backwards with the sack. Well, that takes the wind right out of your sails. This offense is trying to find a way to get back into this game and another pressure and a sack against their quarterback. So a tricky situation here. Third and very long inside your own 20. How much of a risk do you take? You know this defense could be very aggressive at this moment. Caught over the middle. It's law. They bring him down, but not before an explosive play through this offense through the air. This is a big conversion by this offense. They're down now in the second half. Probably limited opportunities at this point in the game. Every chance you get your hands on the ball, you need points. They keep this drive alive right here. Alabama comes up to the line quickly. handoff from the shotgun tackle up near midfield at the 48 it's exactly what you want to see as a play caller you get positive yards to be able to kind of keep you on schedule as a play caller that's all you can ask for good job up front and a nice run now it's second down here he hands it off from the gun the sophomore able to bring him down quickly. So the ball placed right at the 50. Offense looking to pick up the first down here on third and short. To throw, it's Milrow. And he floats this pass deep down the right side. Deep ball is caught for a huge gain here. The stop made at the five. The offense will have first and goal now. Really good job here of converting by this offense. And let's face it, at this point in the game, because they have such a big hole to climb out of, they've got to be able to convert and come up with a new set of downs. They do it here. Now they got a real shot to cut into this lead. This Alabama offense is moving quickly down the field. They're going to run the option. Goes backwards, losing three yards there. Boy, how about this defense? Just so physical against the run. These guys have not been able to do anything on the ground, and it's because of that defensive line and those linebackers taking away the run game. So off the loss, it's second and goal from the eight. Caught in the backfield. It's Prentice. They'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown. Tie. Kirk, they were backed up to start the drive, but some bold play calling, great execution, and they reached the end zone. You know, it's easy to just kind of pull your horns in and get conservative when you're pushed way back close to your own goal line, but not this offense. They came out, showed the confidence that they have in their quarterback, and it paid off. Nice touchdown. Now they line up to kick the extra point. He knocks through the PAT and ties the score here in the third period. Getting set to kick the ball off now. Ah! 
So no return here. He takes a knee in the end zone, and they'll begin the drive at the 25. And the powerful Georgia offense is back out on the field. They scored a touchdown on their last possession. Let's see if this defense can make adjustments and prevent that this time. That one falls incomplete. Good defensive play. Brings up second down. Looking to pass. It's back. Makes the throw across the middle of the field. And he's got his man open downfield. They bring him down, but a big chunk of yardage on the play. How about the arm strength from this quarterback? He really didn't have any other option than to put it right in there and give it everything that he had. Great timing and a good job of squeezing that in between the defenders. So the offense with the first and ten now. The football placed exactly at midfield. Shotgun formation. Here's an inside give. They stop him after a six-yard gain, so second and four. Great job by the offensive line here, opening up some holes and giving the running back room to run on first down. Plays like this can open up the playbook for the play caller, allow him to make that defense think, are they going to run? Maybe play action, maybe throw the ball downfield. Again, makes it second and medium. We'll try the ground game here with the running back. Fighting off the defender. Brought to the turf, but made the first man miss on the way to the first down. You know, a lot of people feel running backs with elite speed shy away from contact, but that wasn't the case there. Instead of running around the defender, this back elected to run right through him. Georgia getting set with a first and ten now. Off the play fake, looking to throw. Fires it to the wideout. That's going to be incomplete. A first down drop here in the middle of the field. That's a misfire there, Chris. This passing game has got to be able to get into sync and find a rhythm. Incompletion makes it second down. Pre-snap motion from the offense. They look to throw it here on second down. Caught behind the line. It's Lovett. Brought down for a loss after the completion. Not what they were looking for. Well, a lot of times you match up a wide receiver, you get a linebacker on him. You'd like to think that the wide receiver can shake him. But this linebacker is really athletic and is able to make plays in space. Offense been in reverse here. Now a long way to go to convert this third down. To the air. It's back. And he pulls in the catch. And they pick up the first down. Tackled at the 25. A new set of downs after that completion. Moving the receiver around pre-snap. That one is over everyone's head beyond the end zone and incomplete. Man, if I'm this offense, Chris, I stay aggressive. I know they didn't connect there, but keep testing this defense. Keep challenging them because if you do connect on that one, it could be a game-breaking play. Incomplete, so it's second down and ten. And the tight end goes in motion before the snap. Second down, we're going to throw it. Looks downfield and connects with a wide open wide receiver. Touchdown, dogs! This quarterback on fire today. That's another passing strike from this quarterback. He is having himself a tremendous ball game. Boy, this guy just can't miss. Every single time he throws, it seems like he's coming up with another touchdown. The receivers are running good routes. He has enough time to throw. And man, this poor defense, they might want to think about changing up coverage because right now it is not working. So they'll try to add to the lead now with a PAT. PAT makes it a seven-point lead.
Kickoff team is on the field. Let's see if they give the returner a chance to bring this one back. He's going to bring it out of the end zone from a couple yards deep. To be tackled at the 17. Strong job by the coverage team. Here comes the Alabama offense onto the field. Let's see if he can keep that passing game going. The last position, very efficient and precise. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Chris, I'll be really honest with you. I don't know why they continue to try to run the football. I'm all about balance. I'm all about trying to make sure a defense has to defend the run and the throw. But at this point in the game, they haven't been able to run the ball. They're going to have to go through the air if they're going to come back and take the lead in this game at some point. Off play action, he's looking to throw. And he's tackled after the catch. Hold up a second. The coach has called timeout. He may use a challenge here to have the officials take another look at that one. Using that challenge, a smart move by the head coach as the officials overturn the previous ruling on the field. And they hit him just as he releases the ball. It's incomplete. Chris, this offensive coordinator is going to have to adjust. We've seen hits and sacks and pressure on this quarterback all game long. They've got to find a solution to create more time for the quarterback to be able to throw the football or maybe completely overhaul and change what they're doing on offense. And the ball is away from his own end zone. Oh, and he's got a crease here. Look out. And the returner is brought down. This should be the last play of the quarter. They flip it to him on the jet sweep. Stop there for no gain, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Well, Kirk, it's Georgia on top so far. We reached the end of the third. Time is running out to cut into this lead. Let's check out the game stats before we go on. We're set now for the fourth quarter. Who is going to make the crucial plays to take home this W? Looking to throw, it's Beck. Finds an open target on the left side. A big hit by the linebacker, able to knock him down. Chris, that's another nice pickup through the air. I, I thought they might be really just out to run the football here with the lead. But instead, they're electing to throw the football. Different routes, quarterbacks in rhythm. Really, it's almost an extension of their uh, passing game. In the third and short, they'll try to throw for it. Running back grabs it on a screen. Heads out of bounds after a solid gain, more than enough to pick up a first down. Well, nice job here by the receiver to be able to pick up this first down. I guess the only thing he could have done better was stay in bounds. You got to stay in bounds to be able to keep that clock moving with the lead. Georgia setting up for the first and 10 now. Looking to throw yet again. Fires it to the wideout. Pass is caught right near the sideline. What a catch does get the foot down. I just continue to be in awe of this offense. Even with the lead, these guys are going to play for 60 minutes. They do not let up. Here they are. Typically, you want to run the football here to work the clock. But these guys stick to the game plan and keep throwing the football, trying to get more yards. Snapping it from the red zone now. Looking to throw. And he's going to fling it deep. And it's intercepted, a crushing play. Look out, he's got some space. And look at the return after the interception. Sets the offense up in good shape. Boy, this defense did exactly what they needed to do. Come up with a turnover here in the second half to get themselves back in the game. They get the interception. Now, can their offense come up with a way to cut into this lead? out of the field are coming off a three and out looking to produce a positive drive here and they'll tackle him for a loss of five yards well the back just had nowhere to go how about the defensive line they eat up all the blocks up front freeing those linebackers up to be able to make the play just a bad play all around for this offense so behind the six second and long from their 14. And the ball is handed off out of the shotgun. Did well to avoid a loss there, but it's no gain on the play. 
Chris, overall, it's been a tough day for this offense, but especially for this running back, just not able to find any kind of traction at all. And it's made this offense somewhat one-dimensional and a large reason they're trailing in the fourth quarter. Well, a serious challenge for this offense. You don't want to be in third and long inside your own 20. How much of a risk will they take to try to pick up this first down? And the quarterback finds the tight end for the completion. A big hit by the linebacker. Physical tackle there, big versus big. Great job here by the defense. Third down and long. You drop back in coverage, keep everything in front of you, force that quarterback to have to check the ball down, and then you rally to the football to force his fourth down. Great job here by the D. You know, kick it away here. On the return, it's Evans. And the coverage team makes the stop on this return. And the Bulldogs offense is back out on the field. That costly red zone interception the last time out. Let's see if they can recover from that error. Yeah, I like the run play here. And offensively, at this point in the game, you want to remain in that attack mode first while also staying in bounds and working that clock. Here's the second down play. Easy throw to a wide open receiver downfield. They make the stop, but not before a solid gain that time. How about that play call here, Chris? I mean, I'm thinking they're going to run the football and continue to work this clock. This gives you an idea how much confidence they have in their passing game and this quarterback being able to throw the football with the lead in the fourth quarter, completion, and you're able to keep that clock moving. They're going to run it. The sophomore with a strong tackle there. For the defense coordinator this week, all week telling us about gap integrity, not giving this running back any creases at all. Really sound defense on that play. Second down after that run on the previous play. From the shotgun, handoff inside. Defense gets him down, but they'll take the gain on that play. But I feel like they called that knowing chances are they're not going to hit a home run. But look at this. Put themselves in a perfect third down situation. It's much more manageable. Now we'll see if they can convert. A crucial play in this game. It's third down and two. And of course, they'll work the clock here, keep it on the ground. And they'll tackle him for a loss of five yards. Well, I don't think the offensive line gave the back much of a chance at all. Now, give credit to the defense. It was almost like they were anticipating a run and got up close to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. So on fourth down, here comes a crucial field goal attempt. And it sails right through the middle of the uprights. Solid kick. And that will extend their lead even further. Boy, this guy has such a strong leg. No problem. Up into the net from 50-plus. They come away with three points on the drive, and now the kickoff team will boot it away. Fielded in the end zone. It's Law. Solid coverage there. They get him at the 15. That's where the offense will take over. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. They're coming off a quick three and out, so looking to put something together on this drive with a little more urgency. Well, Chris, as you know, any more in college football, these tight ends are essentially wide receivers. They move them all over the place and try to find a good matchup. And they had one. They're just unable to complete the pass. Offense getting set up. Here's second down. Looking to throw. It's Milrow. Short throw to the back. An easy completion. They bring down the receiver, but that's a nice gain on that play. Chris, I love what this defense is doing right now, working with a two-possession lead, essentially telling the offense, hey, we'll give you those underneath throws. We'll allow those short gains, but we're not going to give any shots downfield, and we're going to tackle you inbounds to keep that clock moving. Alabama comes up to the line quickly.
They're going to throw for it on third and short. Makes a quick catch. And a big game before he goes out of bounds. The offense keeps churning, gets a fresh set of downs. I'd love to see this team fighting the way they are. Picking up a first down on that third down shows you they still believe. They still think they got a shot to come back and compete in this game. Alabama getting set with a first and 10 coming up. Quarterback sets up, looking for an open man. Going for a big play downfield. The catch is made, and he does get the foot down. The rule of the catch, a big gainer. That is great arm strength and accuracy by this quarterback. And let's not forget the wide receiver's job of bringing it in for that big game. This Alabama offense is moving quickly down the field. On first and ten here, looking to throw the ball. Here's a screen pass to the running back. They bring him down, but the back able to pick up some decent yardage in that screen. Screen plays are risky because the defense can get to the quarterback, and it also can be covered. Many times, the quarterback just throws it away. Here, they get some positive yards. And that's the two-minute warning here. This offense desperate to cut into this lead and then try to get the football back. Second down after that previous play. Looking downfield, it's Milrow. Looking right, this one caught. They bring him down, but not before he gains first down yardage. Boy, it's so easy to get caught up in the receivers and the quarterback and your eyes get lost. You forget about the running back. Nice catch and a first down for this offense. They move the six, but hurry to the line here on first down now. Looking to throw it from the red zone. Caught near the sideline. It's Law. And the runner scoots out of bounds after gaining some decent yardage. But they love going to this guy in the slot, don't they? What a mismatch inside. He reels in another one. This guy's automatic. So down here in the red zone, every yard tough to find. Here is a crucial play coming up. Looking to throw again. Oh, and it's almost picked off. A chance for their first interception today. It's going to set up third down. Well, they're snapping the ball near the goal line, but the defense does a good job of thinking, hey, guys, let's force the incompletion. Force them into going for three, and let's not give up six. They did their job there. Crucial. Third down coming up in the red zone. Can they keep the drive going, or do they have to settle for three? Doesn't quite get in, but it sets up a first and goal for this offense. What a great route here by this tight end on third down. And the quarterback does a smart thing by looking for the big fella. Who's your best friend on third down? Of course, the tight end. And now we've got first and goal. The clock is still running. They've got to get set quickly. And he drops back in the gun. And it's incomplete, targeting a man right near the goal line. Oh, my. Gosh, what a miscue here by the offense. After all the preparation and all the practice time, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it in the end zone. It's a big-time drop. And the wideout goes in motion. Dropping back, it's Milrow. Looking to the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, Bama. Well, hold on now, Chris. We're under two minutes to go, and these guys will not go away. They hit this extra point. You cover an onside kick. You never know. And they'll set up now for the extra point try. PHC up and good. They get a little bit closer. I believe they're lining up to attempt an onside kick. And the receiving team makes the recovery. The hands team does its job perfectly. Movement at the second level of the defense now. 
And the Georgia offense is back out on the field. Can they play keep away here? Just protect this lead in the final two minutes. Uh, they test the middle of the defense, but get nothing. And now a timeout taken by the defense, trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. Second down play coming up. They'll work the clock here with the running game. Finding enough space for a solid game before they stop it. And now it's the defense that calls timeout here, trying to get organized and preserve as much clock as possible. Third down play for this offense. And they pick up the first on the ground. Looks like Georgia will have the first down. And now a timeout taken by the defense trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. So the job is simple here. Just take a knee, run out the clock, and begin the celebration. 